crap because Ford doesn't make one because they suck. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be talking about the problems I've had with my emissions system in the first 100,000 miles of ownership. It's windy as hang out here, so I'm gonna go sit in my cab and walk you guys through this so you can hear me. Oh, I'm in Colorado right now and I don't know if you can see it from here, but my hood just got a ton of hail damage. We had a pretty rowdy storm the other day and they were like golf ball sized hailstones. And so now my entire hood is all dented up and so is my wife's Subaru, so very annoyed. But anyway, to get to the task at hand here, I'm gonna talk about the problems I've had with my emission system in the first 100K. I'm gonna open my door to get the miles to show up. Obviously, I'm 5,000 short. I'm at 94,828 but I'm about to drive all the way back to the East Coast in the next month, and I'm driving to Utah on Sunday for a film shoot, so I have a lot of driving to do, and this thing's gonna be over 100K in the next three months for sure. So we're gonna round up. I've owned it for about 50K, the second 50K. The first 49K was a previous owner. The only problem I have had with my emission system since owning it is that the death hose and sensor had to be replaced. That was covered under my Ford extended warranty. I bought the extended premium warranty and I thought it was a bad idea at the time. I was like, ah, oh, shit, the salesman talked me into it. But as it turns out, it's well worth it because as everyone says, the emission systems and all the components will wear out and it will be very expensive to replace said components. So in some of my other videos, I've talked about the importance of getting underneath your truck to check shit and making sure everything's okay. And so the way I found out I needed a def hose and sensor replaced was because I do my own oil changes. And so I was crawling around under the truck and I saw a lot of the urea crystallizing on one of these hoses going into the DPF, followed it all the way back to the def tank. I took it into the dealership and was like, hey, this should be covered under my warranty, you should fix that. And they were like, oh, wow, hey, yeah, I guess we should. And so I got it fixed for free underneath my warranty. Word of the wise, check your vehicle regularly, get on a, a crawler and creeper, crawl underneath your vehicle, look at the bottom end, and if you're still under warranty, you might find some shit that you could get fixed for free. But the def hose and sensor is the only issue I've had with my truck related to the emissions equipment since owning it. So I run Arch Oil AR6500, the everyday diesel treat, every fill up, or some other additive. If I can't get Arch Oil because they don't sell it in usual retail stores or hardware stores or tractor supply, I'll use power service or I'll use hot shots, but I run a diesel additive and then I usually change my oil every 5,000 miles, pretty much on the dot. And I have had zero problems with my DPF being plugged and my EGR being plugged. I would definitely be curious to know how many of you guys have had a a DPF or EGR become plugged from running it. I know with construction vehicles that idle a lot, it's it happens. I drive a ton on the highway, so I've had zero issues with my emissions equipment other than just the def sensor and the hose leaking. I really feel like if you're running the trucks hot, either you're towing or you're driving on the highway a lot, you won't have issues. And I don't tow often, but I'm driving thousands of miles, usually monthly, and I think that keeps the DPF free and clear. Just for the sake of argument here, say, let's say you didn't have the warranty for the 124,000 miles and you had to pay for the def hose and the sensor replacement. I'm not saying that it makes sense for people to buy diesels as work trucks these days. Honestly, if I had a fleet of my own trucks, I would buy the 7.3 gassers because they're cheap as shit to fix and I don't have to worry about my idiot employee beating on my $100,000 truck. So just to give you an idea what it would have costed if I had to pay for it, we're gonna pop inside now and I'll actually bring out the invoice from the Steelership and we can look at the numbers that I didn't have to pay for, uh, for what it would have cost to get that emissions component fixed on my 2019 Super Duty. Okay, so it's a little hack, but I'm just covering up like my personal information and the other shit on the invoice. Basically, I, you know, it says customer states, 
leak in def tank hose and they you know performed the repair or whatever at a certified Ford dealer I did not have to pay for this it was covered in my warranty the labor to do that was four hundred and seventeen dollars and twenty cents the injector assembly for the def hose was a hundred and one dollars and forty three cents and the tube assembly that was leaking was a hundred and ninety two dollars and seventy three cents so not cheap at all and i'm grateful i had the warranty but man that equipment to have that on there passes on a tremendous amount of expense to an owner of one of these diesel vehicles it is not cheap to repair these systems so i just did the math on all those items and 711 dollars and 36 cents to repair just the def sensor and the hose the injector hose that sprays the diesel exhaust fluid into the DPF. That is a lot of money. So anyway, I'm trying to be transparent here about what it costs to run one of these. As I said before, you know, people don't have to come at me and be like, oh, well, diesels are expensive. They don't make sense to own anymore. Like I get that. If I ran a company where I was doing construction or landscaping or something where I had a, a fleet of these trucks, I would run the 7.3 gas based on the experience that I've had as a diesel owner. But they are really fun to drive. They still make cool diesel noises. Would I buy a new 23? Absolutely not. But look, that's what this channel is about. I'm just trying to share my experience as an owner. I hope this was helpful for you all and I appreciate you all checking out the channel. Drop a comment below. Let me know what was your most expensive emissions equipment repair. I definitely want to know. I think it's helpful for us all to kind of share and compare notes. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers.